Good day everyone, Operator Starsky here, I'm sick but still alive. We've got a bunch of news, uh, first of all yesterday uh, there were reports that uh, chemical weapons were used in Mariupol by Russian troops. Apparently Russians used a drone in order to deliver their uh, chemical weapons uh, to the positions uh, held by Ukrainian forces. Of course it's uh, very serious, we are investigating that uh, and we were expecting that from Russian forces. In my personal opinion Russians would rather use conventional so to say gas filled uh, shells. Commonly those uh, gas filled shells are used together with uh, just common shells uh, loaded with uh, explosives in order you know to mask the gas explosion because shells containing uh, chemical weapons uh, don't produce you know that uh, powerful explosion uh, like those uh, common uh, shells do but on the other hand uh, they could have used uh, some kind of drone that we don't know about yet uh, specifically created for you know dropping those uh, those um, gas bombs. We have to investigate that and in case uh, some remains of bomb uh, are found and delivered to Kyiv uh, we will be able to tell exactly what kind of chemical weapons were used against our troops. The good news of yesterday was that uh, Viktor Medvedchuk was arrested by security service of Ukraine. Couple words about this man. This guy is important because uh, Vladolf Putler is his daughter's godfather. Back in Soviet times there were a lot of uh, so-called dissidents. Um, there were uh, artists and poets uh, that were sued by Soviet Union and uh, put to jail because they publicly claimed they love Ukraine and of course because Ukraine was occupied by Soviet Union by Russian communists um, this was a crime so you could understand uh, just like in 70s in 80s in Ukraine people were put to jail and killed for publicly openly saying things like I love Ukraine. It may sound crazy for you but uh, this is how we lived under the Soviet occupation. And this uh, Medvedchuk uh, was a state assigned lawyer for uh, Vasil Stus. Vasil Stus was a Ukrainian poet, a very famous poet and uh, this poet uh, made a lot of poems. I'm not sure whether you can find them in English but they are very good and um, in his poems he publicly explained his uh, love towards Ukraine, uh, mm -hmm. things like uh, Ukraine must be independent and stuff like that. So he was uh, sentenced to as much as 15 years in prison including five years of deportation to some distant areas. So this state assigned lawyer uh, Viktor Medvedchuk do, did everything uh, in order to put uh, Vasil Stus into jail. He confessed on behalf of his client, okay, uh, he confessed to the court that uh, Vasil Stus was a public enemy and Ukrainian nationalist which is against the lawyers etiquette and stuff like that. Uh, you must understand that. So uh, he put him into jail and of course uh, this uh, Viktor Medvedchuk, this lawyer in Soviet times, he was an active member of Komsomol and other communist movements and uh, he is often referred to as the executioner of Vasil Stus because of what he has done. In the jail Vasil Stus went on a hunger strike and died. Literally we have lost one of the greatest Ukrainian poets. He wasn't terrorist. He never took weapons. He was just a poet and this is why Ukrainian people will never forgive this uh, Viktor Medvedchuk for what he has done. Later 
in the terms of uh, Ukrainian independence, Viktor Medvedchuk uh, became very rich and he was so much connected to uh, Russian top management that uh, his daughter Darina Medvedchuk acquired a godfather known as Vladimir Putin himself. Viktor Medvedchuk uh, turned into an oligarch. He was very rich because all of uh, Russian uh, oil that uh, goes through Ukraine kind of belonged to him. Also, he participated in a prisoner exchange uh, during the hybrid war that started in 2014. He helped Russians bring back their troops from Ukraine, exchanging them for Ukrainians. Also, Viktor Medvedchuk had his political party that was completely pro-Russian. Of course, we couldn't do anything uh, to this party because uh, we are living in democratic society. Ukraine is a democratic country, uh, if you didn't know that. Uh, he was arrested for um, collaboration with uh, our enemy that invaded Ukraine. But as soon as the war started, he attempted to escape to Russia. His wife uh, escaped uh, just prior to the invasion um, and uh, he was caught, he was captured um, wearing a Ukrainian military uniform. He attempted to uh, disguise as uh, a Ukrainian military. That didn't help him. Actually, this story is very interesting. As for Maria, yesterday we've been uh, to Hostomel Airport uh, together with the CBC. Our colleagues were able to see all the destruction that uh, was uh, brought by Russian forces. So this was the world's second largest airplane in the world. It's called AN-124 Ruslan and uh, this one is pretty damaged, not as much as Maria, but still I'm not sure whether we can use it anymore. And you can see just how small is this jet hiding under the wing of this mighty airplane. Maria is still alive because one of its engines is still moving. Actually, uh, two engines are moving due to the wind. I know that a lot of people cried uh, when they saw those engines rotating. Of course, Ukrainian dream, Maria, can be shelled and bombed and shot at, but it will never be destroyed because uh, you have to kill every Ukrainian in order to uh, kill Ukrainian dream. Also, uh, we showed our uh, Canadian colleagues uh, this uh, helicopter. I'm not sure whether it was uh, destroyed by our fire during that very first day of invasion or it was destroyed by Ukrainian airborne troops that uh, were uh, liberating this airport that very evening because 100% uh, of Russian airborne troops that uh, captured uh, Hostomel airport were eliminated by Ukrainian airborne troops that very evening. Our airborne uh, took combat that the next day uh, they destroyed uh, one armored column that was uh, arriving from Belarus. Later they destroyed another one and as soon as they ran out of ammo they had to uh, move out and then uh, Kadyrovins uh, actually captured the empty ruined base claiming that uh, they killed uh, 2,000 Ukrainian nationalists. So there were remains of this uh, helicopter. I'm not sure whether it was uh, MI-8 or MI-24. I think um, it was MI-24 because it was smaller. It was kind of tough to tell because not much left of it. But you know, I'm very proud that uh, I was able to tell the story of uh, my brigade that actually changed the whole war during the very first day. Even despite the fact that airport was captured, but Russian uh, troops didn't reach their military goal 
because uh, they expected to land their uh, cargo uh, aircraft that were coming from Rostov. There were um, around uh, 15 or 18 uh, IL-76 uh, airplanes full of Russian troops and vehicles. Uh, I think uh, the invasion of uh, Kiev would look completely different having like three or four thousand men uh, with weapons with uh, vehicles like 10 kilometers away from Kiev. It, it would be very very dangerous. Uh, our commander made uh, two very important decisions First of all, he saved all the men. Uh, we had absolutely no casualties. One of our guys was uh, slightly wounded. Uh, I think he received a fragment into his, uh, you know, uh, how you call it in English? Um, bottom, bottom, yeah. Uh, but he was able to uh, run to his uh, medic and receive treatment and of course, uh, we all survived uh, due to our commander's decision and uh, his second decision was to actually destroy runway using our artillery. As a result, those uh, 15 or 18 Russian airplanes never landed. And uh, those airborne troops that captured the airport actually died for nothing. They were completely eliminated, uh, as I already mentioned. Also, I'd like to thank uh, everyone who supports Ukraine um, that video that we made yesterday uh, about uh, this uh, man who lived in uh, Romanivka. Uh, you gotta check this video over there. I decided that I gotta find this uh, man and uh, I wanna show him all the comments that you guys have left uh, under that video. I'm sure that he's going to be very glad to read your comments, your messages. Um, and uh, I will make a video of that for you. Big thanks to our patrons and uh, all of our supporters. Uh, now we don't depend on the fuel because we have plenty of that and we can do our job. It's very important because of, you know, like uh, minor fuel shortages here and there, but uh, it's not a problem anymore due to you guys. So thank you very much. Many, many, many hugs to you, citizens of the free world. I cannot thank you enough for uh, supporting us, for uh, writing all of your messages to Ukrainian people. Uh, I'm passing all of them uh, to our guys as much as I can and uh, thank you very much. My name is Operator Starsky and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.